Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today um, we're keeping it casual because I'm recording this on a Friday. It's my day off and it's the end of the week and I am super pregnant approaching, well actually, officially third trimester today, which is exciting, a little wild, um, and has me pretty tired most of the time. So um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that is kind of like not been on my heart lately, but has been on my heart in the past and is something I'm really uh, passionate about and should probably look back on and watch this like when I'm in times of struggle. But that topic is patience during periods of waiting or patience in waiting. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys about patience in waiting today. Um, and what I mean by that is really just like having faith um, and patience in times of struggle, times of trial, times where you feel like you're like all alone and you don't understand why the things you want aren't happening. Um, there's like a couple things that I like to remember during these periods um, and a couple of verses that come to mind that I wanted to share with you guys about. I think it's really hard. Um, we are in a world filled with social media. You'll hear me talk about social media a lot. I think it's super dangerous for like the comparison game um, and comparing ourselves to others, super dangerous for relationships, for marriages, for parenting, like all of these different things. We feel like there's other women that are better mothers. We feel like there's people that are better wives. We wonder what the world will think of us if we decide to stay home and be a stay-at-home mom or if we quit our job to focus on our marriage like whatever it looks like everyone has their insecurities and I think social media and other things that are constantly in our face um, and that we also don't do much to prevent them from being in our face have a detrimental effect on our mental health our anxiety depression um, insecurities body image whatever it is um, we are comparing our lives and our real authentic experiences to completely curated perceptions of what other people are experiencing. This becomes really hard in periods of waiting. If you are struggling with something, if you're you know, wondering why you haven't found a boyfriend or wondering why all of your friends are married and you don't have a husband or wondering why God has just caused so many miscarriages or not even miscarriages, just pregnancy tests that are negative when you guys are trying or, um, you know, a job like that hasn't come to fruition. You haven't found a job. You've been applying and searching or you're in undergrad and you don't know where you're going after graduation. Like whatever it is, whatever the period of waiting is, maybe you're married and your husband is struggling with really serious mental health problems or um, or you are struggling with health issues, chronic health problems. Um, maybe you're just insecure like about the way you look in a bikini and you have body image issues and you've been praying for God to just take those away and allow self-love to come in. Whatever your struggle is, whatever your, the thing that is your stumbling block, um, it's really hard to have patience in waiting. And this is coming from a girl who is not patient. I am a person of faith and I think that I had a lot more faith and hope when I was younger. And um, the Bible verses about just how much um, God, well Christ loves children and um, faith like a child and all of that so resonates with me because I, loved how close I was with God when I was younger. And I think it's something that although I've grown in my faith in many ways, and I think I can stand up for God better and have a greater understanding of the things he's taken me through. Like I literally think my own life is a miracle at this point. But um, I definitely had a larger faith, like just a bigger, like there were never doubts I just had a greater faith, a greater hope. Um, and I think that's something that we forget as we grow older. We, we lose that childlike faith, that God can move mountains type faith. And then when the things that we want don't happen, then we begin to doubt God or we question God or we wonder if he's listening. And I think um, prayer can sometimes become a one-way street. We feel as though 
it's unidirectional, us to God. But really, it's both ways. God just speaks in moments of quiet and he speaks through different things. And so, you know, sometimes we aren't listening um, because our world is so noisy and hectic and filled and there's, you know, so many verses of the Bible that just encourage us to listen and not only to um, hear but to listen and to take in the signs that he's showing us and the words that he's telling us. He gave us a whole book of his words um, for encouragement, but how many times when you're struggling do we actually turn to that? Or do we actually seek out God fervently? I think we get frustrated. Maybe we try it a little bit and then we get frustrated or we don't at all. Like I know a lot of college students turn to alcohol or partying or sex or whatever, whatever your thing is. Often we turn to like unhealthy, temporary solutions or the newest fix that can fix our anxiety or depression instead of um, turning to God in prayer, reading his word, seeing his promises and trusting in him. And it's really a trust issue. Like we're so broken and trust is hard <laughs> and we get burned by humans each and every day. And so why would we trust God? Well, because God has never broken a promise unlike our human human counterparts. You know, our husband will let us down, our boyfriend will let us down, our mom will let us down, our dad will let us down, parents fail, children fail, every every human being will fail, but God doesn't fail. For me, as a Christian, um, I am also, yoga. I was a yoga teacher, um, and yo am yoga certified, and also, um, love yoga and love all things mental health, mindfulness, meditation, etc. And I think as a Christian, like people, some people think mindfulness is like not a good thing and yoga is not a good thing. And I see it differently. I think for me, mindfulness is incredible because if you are a Christian that practices mindfulness, the, the idea of mindfulness is kind of that, that grasping of all of the conscious thoughts that are moving through your brain, your, the way you feel, the way you like your perceptions related to your environment. But what it does is it stills your mind. It stills you in your environment. It quiets your circuitry. And what's cool is when you are in that quiet, God enters that space. And I think it's really neat because it reminds me of a verse that we put up on the, our walls and have as our phone backgrounds, but often don't actually think about and embody in our life. And it's be still and know, or be still and know that I am God. Depending on your translation, there's a lot of variations, but um, be still and know that I am God. And in that still, God will reveal himself. So for me, a verse that I just, it's really actually my life verse, um, and it's something I just like kept going back to in times of struggle, is James 1, 2 through 4. Um, the, the book of James is just awesome in general. I'm a, Personally, it's my favorite book of the Bible. I love it. Um, but James 1, 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you find trials of various kinds. For you know that the trying of your faith produces patience. So let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I love this verse because um, I think praying for patience is like a double-edged sword. I pray for patience, but then God tries your patience, and that's how you grow in patience. It pro produces steadfastness, produces patience. Um, this is like such a good verse. Count it all joy when you face trials of various kinds. Like, what? Okay, God, like... Yeah, I really wanted these trials today, but the trying of our faith produces patience. So let patience have her perfect work, meaning through that trial, have joy, experience or embody or develop your patience through the trial by waiting. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, perfect and complete, whatever your translation says, wanting nothing. I think this is so humbling. Like it's so, it's hard to go through trials period. It's harder to go through trials and be patient. And it's harder still to go through trials and be patient and joyful. Like the things that 
God asks us to do aren't easy, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. And that doesn't mean that it won't be the right thing for us. And so kind of like, you know, we could do a whole study on the character of God. I've done them before. Um, and God has a lot of different character traits, but one of them is our heavenly father. And just as parents do what's right for their child, Sometimes God is working in our lives and doing, setting things up, setting, you know, little things in motion, dominoes, you know, in motion that are hitting other dominoes that will create at the end of the day, a story that is the best for us. It may not be what we want. It may not be what in our human brains we think is best for us, but that doesn't mean that it isn't, um, good, good. And it's not good. Doesn't necessarily mean what we want but it is good. And just as parents, you know, I feel often like the little kid that wants Swedish fish for dinner and your parents say no. Well, they say no because one, they don't want you to have like red dye number 40 or whatever, but two, because they want you to have a nutritious and healthful dinner. And in that moment, in that smaller picture at that age and at that time, I wanted those Swedish fish and they were mean and I didn't like it and I didn't have patience and or maybe they said I could have one after dinner. I didn't have patience to make it through dinner. I wanted it now. That's kind of the way God works in a much larger picture. So sometimes, um, I know I have definitely been in moments of my life where I've been praying so hard. I pray, like, and not just moments, I mean like years of my life, like years and years in a row of my life where I've been praying for the same thing. And praying and trusting and praying and trusting and just wondering where is God? Does he hear me? Like, why am I that bad of a person that like, he's not answering my prayers or like, it's just all these things, all these doubts and questions run through your head. And I think sometimes, I guess I'm going two ways with this. Sometimes God answers our prayers, but not in the timing that we want. And then other times God, um, answers our prayers, but not in the way that we want. And I think this one's really important to recognize. I think my marriage is an example of this. I have prayed for people that I was dating to get to know Christ more deeply, for God to fix things in their personality, for um, God just to work on their hearts and in their soul. And I was praying for these qualities in my future husband. Well, God gave me all those things. God did not do it in the timing. I guess this is both. God did not do it in the timing that I wanted. And God gave it to me in a different person. God literally rewarded me with every single quality that I prayed for. Everything that I wanted him to change in another person. Everything that I wanted in a future husband. But in a different person. And I think that's so like crazy. And it's so important for me to remember. Because it, our answers to prayer don't always look like what we're looking out for. So you need to remember that. I think the other thing to remember during this period is like, okay, so maybe God's like, you're like, okay, maybe God is listening to me and maybe he's just not going to answer it in my timing and he's not going to answer it in the way that I want, but he will answer my prayer. How do I know he's actually going to do that? And I, I, I get this too. Like it's totally valid and totally fair, but I think that what we have to do again, like both with understanding the character of God and also by um, just looking at his track record, we can gain reassurance. And what I mean by that is like, you can look at your own life and I think it's harder to see in our own lives like the times God's been faithful. I definitely um, think that God has just taken me out the other side. Um, and I think it was actually funny because in church um, last week, our pastor was talking about how basically the relationship between Christians and boldness. And I think that that's like an interesting concept. I personally am a very bold person in many areas of my life, but sharing my faith is not one of them. And I feel this way for a couple of reasons. I, um, I don't like shoving my faith down the throats of other people. And I also feel that we learn so much from people uh, with other faith backgrounds and other perspectives that I'm not trying to just talk over people and, and not listen to them. And so 
I struggle with boldness in my faith and instead I try to be bold in my actions and the way that I love the world which I very much fail in I'm not saying I love the love people and love the world perfectly at all um, I feel every day in my words and actions and everything decisions but we have this boldness develop as a result of something that happens in our own lives. Basically, we, we get boldness out of confidence in something. And what my pastor said when I wrote down um, from the sermon is he wrote, you'll have the confidence to speak when you have the conviction that the thing you're speaking about changes lives. I thought this was so powerful because um, I absolutely think that God changes lives because God changed my life. And I think that's like the best argument um, and that's what gives me the faith and the strength and the courage to talk about things like this with you guys. It's not because I know more than you. It's because I know that these beliefs transformed me and worked a modern day miracle in my soul and in my life. So we'll talk about that in a whole nother video if that's something you guys are interested in. But I wanted to share with you guys um, the idea of track record. I think it's hard for us to see it in our own lives, but God gives us a whole book of, of stories that happened. And just time after time after time where he proved faithful, he kept his promises and he gave us things to remember, you know, that happened thousands of years ago before Christ in the Old Testament, but that are still happening today. And a few of those things um, were revealed to Abraham and I love them. In Genesis uh, chapter 22 verses 17 through 18, God said to Abraham, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the grains of sand that are on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my word. Okay, so you're like, okay, cool, God. Like you're gonna give this kid, guy a bunch of offspring. Like that's usually how it works. Well, you wanna know something really cool about this story? If you don't already know. Abraham and Sarah couldn't get pregnant. Sarah was barren. Um, so like God speaking to Abraham, he's telling him all these things. Think of if you were Abraham, like, okay, God, you're going to do this. Like, and she was old at this point. Like she wasn't young. She wasn't like 20 and able to get on IVF and all these other things. Like this was radical. And Abraham was just such a man of faith. Um, he's actually in the New Testament in this uh, chapter in Hebrews called the Faith Hall of Fame where uh, God talks about people that are in heaven because of their great faith and um, I think this this is such a good reminder and what's cool is like God told Abraham your offspring will, will multiply like the stars in the sky and like the grains of sand on the beach. I don't, I don't know if you've ever as a kid like tried to count the stars in the sky or grains of sand. I know I did. It's impossible and you just are like totally bewildered and overwhelmed by the majesty of it all and the the sheer number um and he gave abraham something that in moments of doubt whether it's at night or if he's out you know walking i mean he lived in a desert area so sand was quite abundant but um he didn't have to go to the beach for it but he gave him things that every single day could be just a reminder of the fact that he was going to follow through. It's like, okay, I'm doubting you. Sarah's not pregnant yet. Like we haven't had a kid. How are our offspring gonna multiply? And he looks up in the sky and it's just filled with stars. And he's like, wow, God promised me that that would be what my offspring lo look like one day. And I think it's cool because like God didn't promise me my offspring would multiply like that. But in moments of doubt, I can look at those things. I look at those stars and I remember, okay, God promised him that and he came through because from Abraham, if you don't know the story, from Abraham came these sons and these sons, from these sons came all of the generations of, um, basically that spread out throughout the Middle East and that region um, into the world and populated the world. And so it's really cool 
and he totally came through, totally kept his promise, but we still have those things to look at every day. And God does that a lot, like using nature or things that are tangible to us as reminders. Like, okay, I'm up here, you can pray to me and I can give you peace, but you can also look out and remember that he hears us and he will take care of his children just as he feeds the sparrows in the field or clothes the clothes, sorry, clothes, like puts on clothes, the lilies of the field. Um, and I think that these are beautiful promises to remember. It's cool that we like can look outside our window and just remember all of the other things that God takes care of that are so much smaller and so much more insignificant than us as humans. And hopefully that gives you hope that you can trust in God um, to kind of be listen, be hearing you and be working for you in the periods of waiting when you start to doubt. I don't think doubt is a bad thing. Um, I think in a lot of ways it can strengthen your faith. You just have to seek the right things as answers to your doubt. In, in closing, I will... Uh, just share one little quote, and I'm trying to remember, it's by a very famous older uh, evangelist, and I forget who it was that said this, but they said, God is rarely early, but always on time. And I think that uh, this, this for me has been very true. He, he doesn't do things, sometimes he does things like right when I pray, but often he doesn't do things right when I'm praying. Sometimes I've had to wait years for things but he was also working in me, working in my life, um, you know, working in the lives of the people I was praying for, or the things I was praying for, um, and everything was on time. Everything happened when it should, happened when it was best for me, um, and only now do I see that in hindsight. So, I guess I'm encouraging you guys um, just to have faith and patience in the waiting. Um, read the book of James, read uh, James 1, 2 through 4 specifically, because I think that um, that relationship between joy and patience and steadfastness also relates back to um, Romans. I think it's Romans chapter 5, and it says all of these things produce character and endurance and character and hope are all just so closely linked. So. If you are in a time of waiting, um, I just want this to be encouragement to you to not give up and encouragement to you to have patience because God is working in your life. He is listening to your prayers. The answers just may not be in the timing or look like what you want them to. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up for me. Um, tap the subscribe button below. Let a girlfriend know that she can come over to my channel for some faith related videos. And let me know something you'd like to hear more about in the comments below. I really, really would love to hear from you guys. Um, and until next time, uh, find joy, spread love, and seek adventure always. Bye, guys.